All right, so here is um, the boundary supply. This is what I'm traveling with as of late. So I'll start off with the mini compartment actually. So this is a compartment that I, um, that I usually, when I'm on the plane, I'll detach. And sometimes I'll have a tablet here. Um, if not, then I'll have whatever. But uh, you guys will see. So here I usually carry my headphones. So in here I have my Sony, the three model, not the latest one that came out because it's easier to travel with. And I also put in earbuds. Edifier, I still travel with these. These are great. Since these uh, charge through USB-C, both of them do, I took out the USB-C uh, cable that comes with the Sony and I use another set of USB-C cables that are in this pouch, funny enough. So yeah, so that's a necessity for me. I also travel with uh, Zendor. Uh, it's able to shoot off 100 watts. I think you guys can see that there. And 60 watts, so it comes in pretty handy, um, especially when charging my laptop on the go. Or anything, as a matter of fact. Oh, that that was kind of freaky. Oh, okay, no, it's just 38, but for some strange reason, it feels really weird on the camera. Um, an extra battery for my camera. I usually have it in here, but I was recharging things. Some uh, minor medication, if anything happens. Some ibuprofen. Here I have another compartment, and here is where some of the gadgetry uh, comes into life and some of the changes that I've made as of late have been predominantly in this area. So one of the things that I noticed that when I was traveling is that sometimes you go to like the airport or hotel and they have a horrible jack where you try to plug in one of these babies but um, when you put it into the wall they tend to just fall off. And it's so inconvenient because, I mean, you want to have these, especially if people are charging their phones, you, you want to be, everyone wants to be able to use the outlet just to charge their, you know, their electronics. However, this makes it nearly impossible to those places where you plug in and it just falls. It doesn't grasp into this. Some places are really good about this, which is great. Hence why I travel with one. Um, I've also had them die on me. Uh, I've had my laptop charger actually die on me. So that's why I started bringing these because they're more convenient. But as of late, I added this to my, to, to, I guess my bag. And I took out the other one I had for traveling. So this one, you could plug into the wall. This is for an Asian um, plug-in system. So I would need to get an adapter when I still travel to Europe or any other country like that. I wish I would have sold like multiple uh, connectors, but they don't, but either way, so it has two plugins, so you don't lose the plug, and it has two USB-C and two USB-3 plugs, and it's able to shoot off 100 watts. So this is a pretty cool addition. I tried it during this trip. Um, here is a box for it. So it uses GAN 3 technology. And um, yeah, it could charge basically just about everything that you throw into it. Um, it here they put in a monitor, it charges uh, a MacBook, an iPad, headphones, and a phone. All at the same time. Here are the specs for it. For those of you who wanted to know, you can pause it right there if anything, if you need more information on it. But yeah, so I added this to my back, my backpack. These two items travel with me, as they I could sometimes plug in this one into this and then my laptop charges at 100 watts which is great directly or my phone 
I could leave it alone for this to charge or this to charge and it charges faster. So yeah, so I've added these two. Now I stopped carrying my battery charger. I used to have like a mini Panasonic battery charger that came with my envelope batteries. And I started using the ones that charge right into the batteries. So as you'll see here, it uses USB-C to charge. I think they hold about a thousand ma. They say like two thousand, but no, the the ma is really what you want to go after. And these are lithium batteries, so uh, they're pretty good up to now. I haven't had any issues. I've had them for over a year. They've been great. So I have I have two double A and two triple A that I travel with, same company, and there you see the USB C port and I also carry with me a I guess a USB this is one gigabyte it's pretty handy for sharing information and even a movie sometimes you want to watch a movie and you can't connect your laptop with the place as a USB C the screen so you can go ahead that or they have a cable box that has a USB C I mean a USB so you can just transfer movies pictures or even music and play them through there so I added that into it. I do have a six foot cord, uh, just in case. Before I wasn't traveling with this, this gives me about three feet. This gives me about six. So I do have a bit of a distance to charge anything. This cable's supposed to hold 100 watts. It's the same company if I'm correct, or it might be a different company than that one. But yeah, it's able to transfer up to up to 100 watts, and it's also somewhere around here. There we go. Um, so this has been useful, especially when using one of these two and the distance. I don't have to be next to an outlet. Um, I added a 100 watt dual USB C cable. So this one plugs into one of those two, and then one of these. Uh, can hold shoot out 80 watts, the other one shoots out 20. So uh, for a MacBook and a and a phone, you're able to charge both of them at the same time without an issue. And I went ahead and added another one, and this one's a cheaper version of it. I have a lot of tie-ins that I should be using, um, but yeah. So this one plugs in regular USB. I do have this just in case. Um, I don't have any USB outlets available. I can use USB-C. And this one charges basically micro USB-C and iPhone cables. I mean iPhone phones or whatever it is that needs to go in there. Um, sometimes you meet someone and they don't know where to charge and you have one of these in your hand and you're like, yeah, why not? Here you go. So yeah, so these are the items that I'm mostly traveling with nowadays that are pretty useful technology-wise. Um, now to open up the, oh here. Here I usually store my sunglasses, but I have them out. I also have tea and tissue. I don't want to take them all out. Um, I also have Alka-Seltzer in there. And here I do have a, a pouch. Ah, yeah, it opens up right here. That's where you put in your sunglasses and stuff like that, and it separates them. You could also put in your passport. Ah, give me a quick second. Yeah, so sometimes with the tea, it's just easier to get out from there, um, especially if you have if you're on a flight and they're giving out hot water. It makes it a lot easier to deal with, so that's why I do that. Now I'm gonna open this baby up if I can. Um, I'm trying to do this with one hand, but I'll try to do it this way. All right, so there you guys see that it's open. So obviously I'll have an outfit on, whether it be a pair of jeans. I usually try to, try to, uh, to travel with whatever it's the thickest or largest. That way it makes it easier on the backpack not to have to pack it, right? 
So as I open this, here I usually keep, as you guys see, my toiletry. So toothpaste, toothbrush, hairbrush. Um, here I have some bug repellent. Uh, here, I took it out, but I will have probably sunblock if I'm going to a place that's very sunny. That or if I'm able to pack it, I'll pack it in here too. It depends on how the storing is going. So I start, I added a 24 liter backpack um, by Matador, which is water resistant and it's been pretty good. It looks something like this. And I'm able to carry my laptop and my, um, my camera. So it's a bit of a V shape, if you will. It's narrow at the bottom and then it goes, it goes, it gets fuller as it gets bigger. But yeah, um, it has a compartment here. It's water sealed. And it's one of these rolling ones that uh, makes it easier to block in the water. The straps are very thin. So, I mean, it's, it's meant more as a, I wouldn't call it everyday backpack, obviously, because it has no, it has no rigidity. So that means whatever you put in this, whatever you put in here, it will take the form of that. So that could be slightly uncomfortable. So for my laptop, I do have like a, it comes, this backpack comes with a carry case for it. So it kind of sets it as a, as a back for this, or it adds that like rigidity where you could build everything out of afterwards. But it's pretty cool because it does have the chest straps to alleviate some of the weight. It does come with two side little pockets for water or tripods. And then you get this pocket right here aside from this pocket right here. So I do carry this, this was added this year. It came in very handy this trip because when I was stuck in Cambodia, I needed one of those and I couldn't get it. I had to get a regular backpack that just didn't do its purpose. So um, this goes with that. I put a filler in here because that goes in here. I usually travel also with a jacket and this is a portable, um, it's just to block away from the sun or when it's a little bit chilly. It's made by Uniqlo. You get, you get cheaper ones. These are, to be honest, overly priced. They're like 230, sorry, 230 RMB, which is about 40 bucks for them they're not worth that much. Um, they're not even waterproof. Mm, they could breathe better, but whatever. I was, I was, I needed something. And Uniqlo usually makes pretty good stuff, so I'm okay with it. So this is also another new addition. Uh, these are, I don't know if you guys can see that there. So they're Vivo barefoot shoes. And I'm somebody who doesn't like to walk around with flip flops because I just don't think they're good. Um, and in case anything happens, if you get anything landing on your feet, if there's ants or you step on something, you get bitten. These do a little bit more for the protection of your feet than anything else. I use these on the beach uh, and a little bit in uh, walking the streets in China. They take some getting used to because they have no cushion and they're meant for people who are more about bare feet. Bare feet. I did add uh, a bit of a of a sole in here, inner sole, because I like to have a little bit of cushion. When I went to the beach or where I knew that I was going into an area that it was gonna get wet and sand, I took them off. So, and they pack very easily. You can fold this and it just makes it easier to travel with. Now, for my clothes, right, so, here, obviously, we have the lens, and I usually have my Sony AR7 IV and, an, and a, with the Tamron 28 to 75 millimeter, and I also have the Sony 12 to 24 millimeter F4. Um, that's the only lens that was available when I got it. Um, by that time, I think like two years later is when Sony came out with the 2.8. So the F4 works for me fine. So as far as shirts, let's see what we have here. So as you guys know, I was testing the Merino wool shirt, the one that I have on right now. Um, I, and I gave a review on that 
on this item. So I have other items here. So I have the Unbound gray shirt and it's definitely a step up in quality from this one that I have on, from this. Um, but I think ultimately it is not as good as the other Merino wool shirts that I will show you guys in a second. So this one was one of the ones that I traveled for a year with and I wore basically, I rotated between three shirts on a daily basis. Um, so here, we it even comes with an extra mud button. And this is a company that's called Sealwood. Yeah, there we go. I will recommend their stuff. Um, this shirt, I actually liked it because it has, it has buttons. And I usually have them in verse because just in case they pick up any felt or anything lands on them, the inner can get ruined. I don't, and then I can still wear them. Uh, sometimes you have cats or hair or something like that or dust uh, when you lay a shirt down and it's easier to clean when it's this way. So yeah, so I, I like I like the way it's designed and it fits really nice. And then I have two of these. This one's a small and then I have a medium. And these are sheep run. No longer does it have the tag, unfortunately, that's painted in there. But um, this is perhaps one of my favorite shirts. I've worn this shirt continuously through the last three years, even when I have an outing with the kids and stuff like that, it's made out of wool, but it's been it's been through so much that it feels like cotton now or silky almost, and it's really nice. Um, remember how I told you guys stuff about the order and how it turns. Um, it is a little bit toasty here, but it's been washed. I think you can see some darker spot around there, but it's underneath the armpit for the most part. Um, but the fabric does feel slightly different here. So that's why I use crystal deodorants uh, or unscented deodorants that are made out of natural elements. I stop using a stick when I travel, only when I'm at work and stuff like that. Because stick, I usually that clothes I send to the dry cleaners or I wash myself once a week. Um, so that's not a problem, it's constantly being washed. While these don't tend to get washed often. So yeah, um, as you can see, I mean, the fabric just, it's just nice and soft. So that's what I use for the shirts. So usually I will travel with three shirts and the one that I have on, I might add another another one, which is a kind of like a work shirt made out of wool and it's thicker. It's a salon sleeve shirt. And I usually have it because just in case I have to present or do something, um, I could have it here it folds, it wrinkles, but then if you wear it for like half an hour, it stops wrinkle, um, and it stops being it stops being wrinkled. So yeah, so I'm gonna move this out of the way here. And this one's a bit fuller because this one has a lot more stuff in it. And yeah, it's just waiting to be opened. So here we have the bluff work shorts, which I reviewed in another video. And it has here the security pocket. It has a security zipper outside of it. And then in the back here, it also has this one sealed, not sealed, but zippered too. The pockets are great because they have um, multiple layouts. And here's bluff works here, so you spell it. The pockets, I like the attention to detail with them. Um, the long pants are also very cool, by the way, if you guys are ever thinking about getting them. It has Velcro inside and there's compartments inside the pockets for those of you who are interested on that. Here, I also have the boundary supply shorts and these were also reviewed before. These have multiple pockets. Um, it also has a zipper right here. And it's kind of tucked in and hidden almost, which is kind of nice. Here, it's just a regular pocket. 
you do have a zipper here that fits a passport easily and unnoticeably. Uh, regular pockets, not much compartment dividers into them. You got a latch for the keychain thing here, and then you just slip those on, slip that into the, I guess like a mini knife or key pocket, and then regular pocket here. These are made out of, um, well, yeah, these are the chase pants or the chase shorts, sorry. And yeah, these are made um, a tactical merino wool. It's in the same one as the other, as the regular pants. A tactical merino wool, 72% nylon, or combat wool, sorry, not tactical. And then like a polyester blend. Um, I did mess up with these. I, I added, I think, fabric softener a couple of times without knowing, and then I read about in Reddit and in other places how to maintain fabric like this, no fabric softener. And then I, I bought wool detergent and soak them on water. And same thing as those. Uh, and then just wash them with cold water in the washing machine for like 20 minutes. Uh, swimming chunks. I do have better ones, but since the summer, I felt like I needed a summer color. So I went ahead and, and used these. I got these from, I think, H&M. They were like a last minute shop. Yeah, and these are H&M. And these are very bright, very tropical. So I was like, fine, I'll take these. And then here I have, I usually travel with three pairs of socks, two low cuts since it's summer. And I'll be, I knew I was wearing shorts and one medium cut socks. And then here I have my underwear. I have two, um, I guess two tidy whiteies, the icebreakers, which are made out of wool. And then these are icebreaker two. Um, these are more, I forgot the name. They're not boxers, but I guess boxer tights or tidy boxers. Um, I forgot their name. Jesus Christ. But yeah, I have two pair of those, two pair of these, three pairs of socks, two, sh three shorts practically. And then obviously what I'm wearing, I'm wearing one extra pair of short. I mean, one extra pair of underwear. I'm wearing one pair of socks. I'm wearing an extra shirt and a pair of pants. Uh, as I mentioned before, I do wear the pants on me when I travel. So that takes care of that, of not having the backpack be bulked up by this. Um, yeah. Yeah.